paper frequently and it's all burglaries and, and crime all around. It's, uh, it's not just people uh, associated with this village because, uh, because they, they don't do crimes. We, have, we don't have locks on our doors. Anybody can walk into their teepee when I'm out, it can walk into my teepee when I'm out uh, and could steal anything if they wanted. Nobody steals from me. If somebody steals my axe, I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't be able to live. If somebody steals my pans, I wouldn't be able to live. It's very important that in our community that people don't steal. And so in our community, people don't steal. Any crimes that take, take place in the area around are done by people from the area around. But in the area around, a local cafe owner and some tradespeople of nearby Shandilo echo the suspicions of the farmers. The reason I banned them is because other customers are complaining about them. Because uh, not that they were smelling, but they used to have this like a smoky sort of smell on them, which would well, stress other customers, I suppose. Well, they've got their own bar. It keeps separate to the local residents. But so we haven't had any trouble. They're well educated. No, they're well spoken. We've had no hassle at all with them. They've tried to come into the pub on various occasions, and um, I just show them the door because. Um, they chase my regulars away, and I prefer to deal with my regulars, you know. Um, these people, as far as I'm concerned, are quite entitled to live their own life, as long as they keep away from me, you know. I mean, uh, I object to the fact that I have to work for a living and they don't. In fact, while some do claim state benefit, others work to eke out a living. A few have developed TP industries to supply the community with essentials like pots and bowls. This lathe is made out of an old sewing machine and some of the products are sold to local people. But as the publicity, not all of it good, has increased, so the hippies have become weary of the attention. A hardcore in the village want no contact with the media or the legal establishment. They want to ignore the council and the high court. Others, like you and Norton, may hardly be affected by the court's ruling, nor want to be. It's a diverse community and he stays aloof from the rest of the teepee village in the upper valley. All he wants is to be left alone to cultivate his saplings and plants in his market garden. I think it's just like the space. I, like, I enjoy the space and the, 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 just the general environment. It's just like I can, I can relax in it without having to... Be, uh, live into a, a Jones society and I can create what I want. I've got the chance, I, I can actually make my own decisions without a uh, sort of judgment really. I mean, I'm the only one that, that judges it, whether it works or fails. It's a hard living, but I, I get by because I, I, I keep my overheads pretty low, so I'm able to probably, that's another case for being here, because I'm able to live at a very low standard. I don't have any prejudgments about at the outside world as far as well I want you to live in a magazine culture. I live in a, a world as it exists, you know, as long as I've got food and warmth that, that, that's, uh, that, and, and dry, and that's, that's, that's the pre requirements of existence. You're aware, obviously, of the hostility of some of the local people to people like you, are you? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm aware of it. But I go out of my way to actually uh, try and communicate positively because if you're actually trading in a given environment, I think you get, they get to know you as people rather than the hippies on the hill or something like that. You are a person. They are a person. The forthcoming uh, High Court judgment, which you all no doubt know about, will that affect you at all? Well, I'll be staying here doing, with, uh, doing what I've got to do and I'll defend my rights because I think... That, Personally, I have a good case. I'm earning, I want to earn my own living. I want to be part of society, just like most other people are. I don't want to be different. I'm just doing... I, 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 you know, I, I, I don't want to say I want handouts from anybody. I want to, to, to trade with people. A recurring problem has been education for the 25 or so children in the camp. Some local farmers fear they represent the next generation of problems. The local authority is worried that many don't go to school. When we've tried putting them in the, the local schools, my own boys have been to the local village school and had an awful lot of uh, trouble there with being called dirty hippies and kicked around the playground and things. And it's a situation that it's not really fair to put the kids into. And 
So most of the children, most of the time, are educated actually in the valley by their parents and so on. We try to keep our education on a low key level. We don't like big organized schools. We don't have big classes of anything like that. But we do teach our children properly to read and write. And we have enough experience in the valley. There's enough graduates, etc., for any child if he or she wants to, to go and take GCSEs or any other exams if they want to. And if they want to go to outside school, they're perfectly free to do so. We let the children learn the way they want to learn, but we make sure that they do learn to read and write because we think that's very important. I would like us to be doing perhaps a bit better than we are, but if you look at our children, they're not totally academically educated, if you like but in terms of being resourceful people who are going to be able to stand up for themselves in the world, then they're at a remarkable level. They're very much more resourceful, more outgoing, more confident in themselves than children that you find in schools. The Jenkinses' farm has been in the family for a hundred years. Their land is next door to the hippies. But even they are relative newcomers compared to some of their neighbours, like John Williams, whose son Gethin is sixth generation. The farming community here shares a deep sense of history and language. Newcomers, whatever their lifestyle, are not easily accepted. One person living near the hippies supports their right to stay, but in the eyes of this community, she too is an outsider. Mrs. Scott, well, I can't tell about her. What is she? only just come here a few years ago. She's not one of the locals. Been here for the last, say, 20 years. We are all local people, been here all our life. Well, she's only been here 20 years, you say? Well, I should roughly, uh, say roughly about 20 years, should we? Where she came from, we don't know. So that doesn't make her a local yet? Well, I don't think she will come a local, too. No. I've got some good friends among the Welsh farmers. I've got some, you know, real Welsh friends. But basically, they're very suspicious of you at first. I mean, I think people ought to be able to do what they like on their own property, as long as they don't tread on their neighbours' toes. How do you get on with the hippies? I find nothing in their way of life to repel me. I mean, they may have longer hair, but then so do a lot of people in other parts of the country. And they do work hard to look after themselves. And they have a real, um, what shall we say, there is a real culture in their community. It's not just that they're dropouts. What do you think of the way um, other farmers uh, treat them? Well, I think a lot of it is, is uh, ignorance, lack of communication. Because people in country places, I happen to be lucky, I've lived all over the world and in towns and in, um, you know, different countries. And I think that it's interesting to meet different people, but there are a lot of small country communities that think that because you look a little bit different or you speak a little bit differently, that you really are something to be feared. But the farmers insist, above all else, their concern is that the law should apply equally. If he can use the land for uh, living, then we can build anywhere then. I mean, uh, it seems there is two laws at the moment, you see. I won't go into that, that's a legal, that's a legal problem. You're saying which have to be legally sorted out. One law uh, for the I believe the council have, have dragged their feet in dealing with the matter for too long. You're saying there's one law for the hippies and another for you? Yes, I do. One local councillor who's fought the farmer's case since the hippies arrived denies the authority has been slow to act. Well, I can't say that the council have dragged their feet, but I can understand that it's been, it's been frustrating for not only the local people, but for the council itself. In what way? Well, these people are living in this community without planning permission, and uh, they've been here now, best part of... Uh, 15 years, 
and 15 years is a long time to solve any problem. All the hippies want to do, they say, is to be left alone. What's wrong with that? Well, uh, it, the law, in my view, should apply to the hippies as well to, to the local residents. If, so, if one person requires planning permission to set up a home, so should everybody. It's very necessary for there to be planning regulations. And the point of planning regulations is to make sure that any development doesn't destroy the environment. And the, the council, the only evidence the council has brought against us is that they say that the development here is changing the character of the land. Well, any other development, if we were building bungalows and roads and all the, all the things that go with normal developments, would in fact be changing the landscape. But you see these teepees down below us. If you came back here in two months' time, those teepees will have moved because we move our teepees twice a year. We're nomadic. At the moment, they're in their winter places in a big circle in the bottom of the valley. In the summer, we move higher up to be near our gardens in the hills a little bit. And when we move, the land is um, left without any sign that there's been human habitation there. So the development that we do is no development in the, in the sense that is normally meant by the word development. It's now up to Mr Justice Graham Eyre in the High Court to decide the future of Teepee Valley. Whatever his decision, it's unlikely to be the end of the story, but everyone in and around the valley will be waiting for it with very different hopes and fears. I just hope that um, the High Court will um, evict them because they do not know, as I said, if they were staying within their boundary, I wouldn't worry that they were there. I don't mind the way they live. I'm, no, I don't mind at all. But uh, they're not keeping within the boundary, so then uh, my personal view is I'd like to see them going. If the judgment does go against us, then we will be immediately looking at what can be done about appealing to the House of Lords or failing that or beyond that to the European Court of Human Rights. Because we do feel that we own land here. We have a human right to enjoy our property under the European Convention of Human Rights. And that we shouldn't actually be persecuted. There's a High Court judgment coming up. It may mean that they have to leave the land. Mm. How do you react to that? Great. Do you think it's going to happen? I doubt it. Why? I doubt it. I don't think they'll take much notes of High Court. They're a law unto themselves. But if they do go, yeah, I'll breathe, breathe a sigh of relief. I don't think we can see the end of Tipi Valley because our experience of living here for 12 years in this valley has brought us close to Mother Nature and we believe in Mother Nature. We know that she cares for us and that she loves us and we feel at home here. And living in a tipi isn't living in a house. It's almost living in the open air because a tipi is open. It's open to the environment. If they take our tipis down, we'll live under the hedgerows because we're not going to go from here.